Today we're going to talk about something called data types inside JavaScript. And we're going to learn about five different data types we have in here, at least for now. A data type is basically when we have some kind of information. And depending what type of information it is, it's going to have a different data type. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable here, like we learned about in the last episode, called person, and set it equal to something. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to a string to start out with, which is a data type by writing double quotes. And inside the double quotes, I can write some text. Now, when you use double quotes, it's called a string. And as you guys can see inside my editor, at least, it turns yellow, which means that right now it's seen as plain text. Now, I can also go ahead and write a number in here if I want to, which is still going to be seen as number one. But the data type is a string. If I want to create a number data type, I'm just going to go ahead and write one or two or whatever I want to write in here, some kind of number. And this is going to make the browser see this as a number data type and not as a string. Okay. Um, the differences between using, you know, simple numbers or a string like so uh, depends on what kind of function you're creating. So you might want to create a string at some point or a number. So it, it depends on the purpose of it. Now, the third piece of data we're going to talk about is something called an array. So I can actually create an array by writing, let's actually go ahead and keep a variable person here. I can write brackets, which is the one without the curlies that we might know from CSS. And then I'm going to go ahead and write some kind of string in here. So I'm going to say Daniel, because this is person, I should actually change this to persons because we create an array, we can store different types of information inside one variable. So right now I have Daniel, I have Lisa, and I might have Susie, which should be a string, there we go. I could also store something called a number data type if I wanted to, without the, the quotation marks. Now, Basically, what this does is that it allows for us to create different types of data inside one variable, which can be useful for creating something like a loop, which we haven't actually talked about yet. But later on, you might want to store different data types. Let's say you have a person who writes different types of information, you know, more than one piece of information and submitting it to a website and you want to save it inside, you know, a variable then you can do it this way to store many different types of information inside one variable instead of having to create three different variables for each person, which is going to lessen your code and also be more useful for you. Now, the fourth data type we're going to talk about is something called an object. We're going to get more into objects later, but for now, I just want to show you guys what an object is so you guys have a basic understanding of it. And when it comes to objects, you can also store many information inside one variable. But the difference here is that we actually have something called properties and a value. So if I were to go ahead and delete this array, which was with the brackets, I can actually go ahead and use curly brackets, open and close it. And inside the curly brackets, we can start out by saying, okay, we have a person, which is the object. So right now we're actually creating an object called persons and well, let's actually change that to person. And this one person has different types of properties. Let's say it's me we're talking about. My name is, well, we should probably write name, which is the first property. And the value of my name is Daniel. Do notice that I used a string, which is a data type. And after we have this one property, which is the name, which is Daniel, because that's my name, I can write comma and say, okay, another property of me could be my age. And that one could be equal to 25, because that's what I am right now. And then we can add another property, which could be my, well, it couldn't be, really be my height, because I don't actually know my height, but we could say number of legs, because I know I do actually have two legs. There we go. And this is a basic way we can store properties to a object and actually have different, you know, have the properties equal to something. And this is something we're going to use a little bit later on when we have something slightly more complicated and what we learned in the beginning here. 
Um, so for now, this is what I want to talk about when it comes to data types. And the last couple of two examples here with the arrays and objects, like I said, we're not going to be using them in the beginning here, but slightly later, we will be using them. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.